Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Kyle and I'm the Ultimate Handyman. On today's episode, I've got two really unique projects. The first project I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be making a dust collection system to capture uh, cement dust. And the reason I'm gonna have cement dust is because I'm gonna be taking this grinder and I'm gonna be grinding a 3 8 groove in this cement you see right behind me. And the reason I'm grinding that groove is because I'm gonna be running this ice maker tubing from my reverse osmosis system under the sink all the way over to where the refrigerator is so I can have nice filtered water to drink and to use for ice. So let's get started. So before we get started with our projects, I wanna show you how I'm gonna be running the copper line and I also wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about why I'm doing it this way. So we're gonna start off under the kitchen sink now our copper line is gonna be connected to the ice spring water system. And it's gonna go into where the dishwasher is. Now it's gonna go in the groove that I'm gonna be cutting and it's gonna be run in the floor over to where the refrigerator is. I'm gonna be cutting a hole here so I can get the copper line in the wall. That'll help protect it from the refrigerator. You'd hate to have it sticking out and then the refrigerator slam into it and break it, possibly. Now it'll come up. I'm gonna put a hole here in this exi existing water box. And then I'll have a small valve here to be able to turn it on and off. And that way the refrigerator can connect directly to that valve. So a lot of you out there are probably wondering, why are you running the copper line in the cement? Isn't there a much easier way to do this? Well, no, I've, I've thought about this a lot and I've come to the conclusion that this is the quickest and easiest way to do it. And it's probably gonna be the least mess. Um, the only other option would be for me to run the line through the wall, um, up into this attic space and over to the refrigerator through this wall. Now, there's a couple problems with that. First thing, there's no access to the attic space above the kitchen. So I'd have to find somewhere in the house, find a way to get, cut a hole somewhere and then get up into this space. And it would be a very tight space as well. It's the roof kind of pitches down. So that would be another uh, problem. I'm a pretty big guy, so that's not gonna be, that wouldn't be very fun. And then I'd also have to cut holes in this wall uh, to run the copper line. So after I got the line in, I'd have to patch the sheetrock and retexture it and paint it, which I've already done. It's already finished. Um, and I don't wanna do any more patching in this house. So that is why we're running it in the cement. All right, now. All right, so let's get started making our dust collector. Now, before I start doing the dust collector, I wanted to show you guys the tool I'm gonna to be using to grind the cement. Now, this thing is called a crack chaser, and it's got diamond-coated uh, cutting tips on it. And you can get these on Amazon. I paid, I think I paid about $50 for this one, and I'll put a link down below so you guys can get one of these as well if you wanna do a project like this or use it for something similar. Now they, they usually use this tool to grind out cracks in cement and it's the perfect size to uh, fit our copper pipe in. So we'll be using this and I'm gonna be connecting that to my Makita grinder. This is a four and a half inch grinder. You can use any grinder, it just screws right on like that. Okay, and then this is what we're gonna be using for the dust collection. So what I need to do now is I need to drill a hole on the side so I can stick my arm in there and grab the grinder. And I also need a hole for the vacuum tube. So what I've done is I needed to measure basically this size of my arm. So what I did is I figured this would be a great thing to use. I took a 7-Eleven Slurpee cup, cut the bottom off of it and it gives me the size of my arm. And I want my arm to be right about here on the plastic. So I found a hole saw, and you grab the hole saw, that fits to right about there. It might go a little bit further in. And then once I drill this hole, this cup will go in there and then my arm won't be sitting against like a really sharp edge. You know, the plastic's only 
maybe about a sixteenth of an inch thick, so it won't be digging into my arm. I'll have a nice surface for it to uh, sit on, and it won't dig into my arm. So I'm going to be using these spider uh, drill bits or hole saws to cut the hole. These are really this is a really great set of uh, hole saws. They're carbide tipped, and you can get these at Lowe's, and you can cut through metal. And uh, I think you can even cut through cement with these things. Yeah, concrete, block, wood, brick, PVC, cement, fiberboard, ceramic wall tile. So they're pretty, pretty nice set. You can get this at Lowe's. Or you can use any old hole saw. All right, so now I'm gonna drill the hole with my uh, trusty rigid drill that's falling apart. <laughs> And I've got my first hole cut in. Clean that up a little bit. Now, just take my slurpee cup, stick it in there. I went a little bit further than I like, but it gives me enough room to hold the grinder. It should be good. And it creates a seal. Let's, let's see how the grinder feels in there. Put the grinder in. I might have to make a hole for the, actually, you know what? I don't need a hole because there's enough space under this back edge for the extension cord. So I'll hold the grinder like that and we'll just cut our groove. Just like that. Now I need to drill the hole for the vacuum and I'll probably I just stick that right on, I'm trying to think where I should put it. Um, what's the best location? I'm probably just gonna put it up here on top. That'd be the easiest. Okay, so I'm gonna do that next. All right, so I went ahead and put some duct tape on the end of my uh, vacuum fitting. Now, now it fits nice and snug in there. Now, in order for this to be able to suck the dust that's in there, there needs to be some kind of uh, opening at the bottom and this, container does actually have a little bit of a gap on each side right here. So hopefully that's enough to create the opening for the vacuum to suck air in and then suck it into the vacuum. And if not, I'll add some more um, slits at the bottom for it to do that. But hopefully it works just how it is. So that's pretty much it. Simple little uh, device and that should help to catch most of the dust. All right, let's head to the floor and start cutting our groove. All right, so I've got everything set up. I've got my grinder inside my dust collector. I've got that connected to the vacuum cleaner, which goes to my dust collector and then the vacuum. And if you guys don't know what this is, this is a uh, dust deputy. It's a cyclone uh, filter and it actually catches 99% of the dust. It all falls down into the bucket before it reaches the vacuum. Really cool tool. I highly recommend you get one. And let's check this out. This works out perfectly. My extension cord fits right in that little uh, gap in the uh, container. Pretty good. And that uh, should still let air in for the vacuum as well. All right, so now it's time to start grinding and uh, getting this job done. Alright, so I've got the groove cut in the floor. 
And my little dust collector worked like a charm. It captured, I'd say 99% of the dust. It did let a little bit of dust out and it was just coming out of the front of it. So what I did is I put some duct tape here and filled that little opening in and that really helped to keep the dust in. Um, yeah, it worked great. If I didn't have that dust collector, there would have been, uh, it would have been like a cloud of dust in here and it would have been a mess. So there's the groove. <clears throat> so originally I was gonna run the copper line. I was gonna run it all the way to the back here and then just kind of bend it in to this hole there. So, but I decided I wanted to, co to cover it completely. I wanted it hidden under the floor so that, that it can't get damaged at all by anybody. So I'm gonna, it's gonna follow this track here underneath the cabinet and then it's gonna pop out right there where that hole is under the uh, kitchen sink. That way it's, uh, yeah, really protected. So I'm gonna show you guys what's going on over here. I had one little uh, mishap where I went off track, but no big deal. We're gonna patch that anyways. <clears throat> so this is what I have done over here. Um, so the grinder was only able to go to about here. And the rest of this I chipped out with a uh, roto hammer with a chisel blade on it. There's that hole that I cut. And then I've got the pipe um, already stubbed out, ready for a valve. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this copper line and get that situated in the groove. I'm not sure if it's gonna stay down flat, so I might have to actually drill some small little holes in the cement and then pound like a maybe a small nail in just to kind of pin it in place and then once i pour that um, either that floor self-leveling over this or the floor patch it should lock everything in place and then once that well actually before i do that i am going to pressure test the whole thing just to make sure i don't have any leaks or anything because you never know um, with copper lines, who knows, there could be, could have been some defect, um, in the pipe that I didn't see and it could have a pinhole leak or something weird. I've never had that happen, but you know, you never know. So always pressure test everything before you, uh, you know, closing the walls and fill in everything. So I'm going to get back to work and I'll show you guys what I've got done in a second. All right, so last night I was able to get the pipe installed into the groove, and this morning I ended up connecting everything under the sink and then over here. So we're gonna start off on this side. Um, I wasn't able to film a lot of it because it was just too difficult. So I'll just walk you through it, what I did. So on this side, I started over here and I ended up kind of bending the pipe into like a, a gradual, I put a nice gradual curve on it just so I can push it up in here and actually get it through this hole. And then right here, I ended up putting two little sheetrock nails just to hold it in place while I was laying it down in the groove. And it actually laid pretty flat into the groove. I didn't have to do too much uh, bending on the pipe. And then right here, I ended up installing a coaxial uh, cable tie down just right there, it actually fits perfectly around this uh, quarter inch pipe. And it's just a little bit under the cement. So once I fill this in, you won't even notice. And I only had to use two of those, one here and one right here where it starts to curve. So I've got my pipe installed under here. This was the trickiest part of the job. I had to actually, I had to mock up this pipe. It's just, you know, kind of estimate how far it went under the kitchen sink. And then I had to pull it out. I had to, I had to actually pull this part out over to here. I snapped a few photos of it. I'll flash those on the screen for you. And then once I got it up under here, it went pretty smoothly. Um, my original hole was right there that I that I drilled. But the problem is there was a piece of there's a piece of wood going this direction, so I ended up drilling another hole there and then running it over 
to the other side. And I'm gonna show you the connection I made. So what I ended up doing is I bought a T, quarter inch T at Ace Hardware. It just presses together. And then I connected it to a valve, a shutoff valve, so I can turn the water on and off to this pipe if I, if I need to. If it ever leaks, we'll uh, turn it off there, which I hope it doesn't ever leak, but you never know. So everything's working. It's got pressure. I've already done uh, a pressure test and flushed it out. So I'm going to show you guys. I'll turn that on for you. And we got water. Hopefully it's enough pressure to run the uh, ice maker and uh, fill a glass of water. Now this setup here, this is just temporary. I'm not quite sure what kind of valve I want to install in this. Um, once I get the refrigerator, I'll figure all that out, but this, this will be fine for now, just to do a test and to hold pressure. All right, so the next step is to patch that hole and then fill this with um, some uh, floor patch material. So I'm gonna start working on that now. So this is what I'm gonna be using to fill in the groove and cover up the copper pipe. Um, I just had this stuff laying around. It's the uh, high performance cement by Quickcrete. It's uh, basically, it's a fast set uh, self-leveling uh, floor resurfacer. And the reason I'm gonna be using this is because it, you can make it really soupy and it'll fill in all those crevices around the pipe and it should make a nice, uh, should help to, you know, support that pipe in the, in the groove. Uh, now, I also have this, I could use this as well. This is just a Henry, uh, it's a universal patch and skimmed coat. It's good, you can use it, it's good to uh, use this for, you know, fixing low spots in the floor, or filling in cracks or, or whatever you have. But today, I'm gonna be using this. And normally, you would mix this whole bucket and dump it on the ground, but uh, I'll just be mixing a little bit in this uh, little container here and just pouring it in the crack as I go. And then also, this stuff recommends you use a primer. Now, if I was doing the main floor with this, I'd use a primer, but for a little crack like that, I'm gonna skip the primer, and I don't really have any primer anyways with me, so we're gonna skip it. Um, and I'm putting a floating floor over it anyways, so it shouldn't really matter. All right, so let's mix some up. All right, so the cement patch is all dried up. I filled in all my holes to keep the critters out just in case anything is able to get under the cabinets. So it's nice and solid. Came out really good. Patched my hole over there. And now I am ready to continue putting down my flooring. found value in this video please like share and subscribe and I want to thank you for watching and I will see you guys the next project